Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. All right, tonight we're going to be reviewing another one of the free comic book day uh, books, uh, Judgment Day, Avengers X-Men Eternals. All right, remember, like always, until we hit 200 subscribers at least, we're going to be giving away this book, and all you have to do is like, comment, and be subscribed to the channel. It's the Joker number one. Mark Brooks variant cover. It's really cool. You got Joker there ride, driving his car with Punchline. I just thought it was actually kind of be sad to see it go. It also does come with a CBCA sticker, which is the Comic Book Community Awards. And that's really cool. Like It's kind of like the Oscars for comic book uh, YouTube personalities and stuff. And I'm sure a channel much bigger than me is going to win that. But um, I'm trying to support them. And so you're also going to get that. So yeah, like, comment, and be subscribed to the channel, and that'll, that'll enter you to win the Joker, and we'll give that away when we hit 200 subscribers. Um, like I said, t tonight's episode, we're reviewing Judgment Day Avengers X-Men and Eternals. And I have a couple things I do want to go over before we get into the episode, okay? <laughs> or the issue, I should say. Um, first off, I want to give a shout-out to a bunch of people that just kind of motivate me and... Um, or just leave really nice comments and stuff, and I really, I really appreciate it. it. It helped. Like you don't know how much it actually brightens my day when I see the nice comments and stuff. So um, I wanted to shout out, and these are people who commented on multiple videos, and it just really supported me, and uh, not with anything but comments and and well wishes and love. And so I have a list here. Uh, so I want to shout out Wally West. Uh, Tom Watson, Chino Cakes 982, uh, Bottom Tier Collector, Wahoo Comics, Tom NT, and Kyle. <laughs> All right. So then uh, there's also a couple other things we always do before we get fully dived into the issue. I want to let you know we're going to be going heavy into spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled for Judgment Day Free Comic Book Day, then that is your warning. <laughs> All right. And uh, the second thing that we do, and I'm going to have to do this a couple times because there's a few creative teams here, is uh, we shout out the creative team on the book. And so in this first part, in this first part here, we have the writer is Karen Gillen. The artist is Dustin Weaver. The colors are done by Marty Gracia. And um, so we will... Get back and get right on into it. And uh, it says here, uh, Thanks for joining me today. I am the machine that is Earth. I am to provide a prologue. Through, if you think about it all, all things are prologue. Each moment is a prologue to the next. Anyway, these events concern three groups. The first is the Eternals. My protectors maintain the earth and its status quo. They curtail the deviants. They follow unbending principles, among them correct excess deviation. The second is the Avengers. To the Eternals, this is a catchphrase. For the mightiest heroes of earth who are not them. They are those with sufficient power to be worth eternal consideration. And then there are the mutants. There, things are complicated. They have been for a long time. Just shy of a million years ago. <laughs> um, Odin says, er, it's a monkey, Uranus. Uranus says, Druig, explain to Odin what he's seeing. Druig says, certainly, my eternal liege. This species has gained some rudimentary psychic abilities, a smattering of telekinesis and telepathy, not to worry about individually. However, due to their species' communality, they've accessed something a little more potent. They've formed a primal hive mind. Odin says, Druig promised me drink to get me here. And unless these monkeys are physically brewing something potent, 
I'm not sure why this is relevant. Uranus says, Druig was lying. It's what he does. I needed you here. We wanted to let your Avengers know we are going to annihilate this species. Odin says, That's harsh. Why do you care? A little thinky monkey is nothing to worry about. It's not just a deviant. It's a mutant. And uh, Uranus says, An infinitely expandable hive mind is a genetic technology that cannot be put in the hands of lesser beings. The longer it goes, the more it will grow in power and the bigger threat it will be. This thinky monkey left unchecked could destroy the world. Yes, mutation can be mutation, but it can also be deviancy. Some children should be smothered in the crib. Odin says, I'm not sure, Uranos. Uranos says, do not confuse our politeness with us asking for permission. This is one of our principles and not something we can compromise on. Would you war with us for their fate? And Odin says, get your lackey to get me a drink and you can go ahead. You're right. A thinky monkey is not worth a war. Earth says, the two patriarchs watched as the forest burned. Odin sipping mead woven from molecules in a celestial hive. It tasted bitter. For Uranus, darkest of all eternals, this was excess deviation identified and corrected. Not for the first time, and not for the last. Of course, as Odin demonstrated, the Avengers don't usually recognize excess deviation when they see it. Recently? What is it, says Iron Man? Besides enormous and hideous, that I can see. Captain America says, We'll ask questions after we stop it from eating that building. Ready? Avengers assemble! And uh, fall, Thor says, Fall, beast, by the dungy underbelly of Tangrisner Fall. And Captain Marvel says, Look, we've got support. And in come some uh, Inhumans. They say, Excess deviation, excess deviation. And start attacking this guy. This big giant monster right here. <laughs> and, uh... Says, uh, we've been forcing backfires in plasma vents for a long time. Thor says, hmm. And one of the uh, Eternals, she says, I need a drink and a shower. Then perhaps another drink. Iron Man says, you okay, Cersei? You seemed a little off. And Cersei says, thanks for your concern, you sweetie. It was a deviant suffering, an out-of-control mutation. And we really don't like out-of-control mutations. Captain America says, Whatever the motivation, we're glad for the help. Cersei says, It wasn't a choice, Captain. When something deviates too much, we have to step in. Choices for you mortals. We Eternals have duty coded in our every molecule. It's most irksome. The Earth says, What is deviation? What is mutation? When is a thinky monkey just a thinky monkey, and when is it a ticking time bomb? Perkoa now. Tick, tick, tick. This is the sovereign mutant nation, the new world superpower, growing with influence every single second. Mutants have always been feared. Now they are also envied. It would be more so if the world knew the truth. The mutants are keeping a secret. And they have solved death. They guard this secret well. The island is a living sentry. This mutant could smell anyone's presence. This other mutant can sense the, so the slightest thought. There are few who would be able to walk unseen here. Sadly, Jack of Knives could stalk their own shadow. And, uh, one of the Eternals is, is here, he says, uh, 
That source of yours didn't lie, Druig. The mutants and death aren't a thing anymore. They're eternal. And Druig says, don't be ridiculous. They're immortal at best. And she says, so what's the plan? And Druig says, thinking, of course. I'm not an idiot. And then, well, it depends on whether or not this very striking mutation is deviation. And if it is deviation, Jack, let's be honest, nothing we haven't done before. The Earth says, this is a prologue. As I said, everything is prologue, with one exception. <laughs> might as well show it. it's the advertisement. It might be in a lot of books this coming week. Really cool. Really cool splash page. Yeah. That's not, like, going on. It just says, eventually you reach the prologue to the end. But it, you know, I don't think that's actually happening. It's just, like, teaser, <laughs> right? And then there's a, a short story after that uh, called Bloodline. And the writer on that one is Danny Lore. The artist is Karen S. Derbo. The colors are done by Ian Herring. And the letter is VC's Corey Petit. And it says, after a town, up, up, down, in Atlanta area game tournament. And this guy named Eternal, he says, your friend stole my victory. It's only fair I steal his blood. And this girl named Brielle starts to beat him up. And he kind of fights back and throws her. Talks to his friend that beat him in this video game tournament and borrows his special controller, uh, like gaming controller. She spins it around in circles and beats up this vampire guy with it and then ends up breaking it though and he's sad and she's like, all right, text me when you're home. She takes off, right? Slams the door. Her mom's like, are you slamming doors in my house? Good night, baby girl. And then her mom says, uh, Brielle knows I don't like going to bed without her in the house. And she knows I see all that grime on her. Whew. This was easier last time I had to get in here. And you see uh, Brielle's mom is like opening up her bed underneath. And she says, I was younger though. We were younger. Oh, Blade, I think your baby girl needs you. And it says, to be continued in Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, coming this fall. And she like opened up something underneath her bed there. It's kind of a real short like teaser on a, on a new series coming up there. It was okay. It was okay. And then it uh, it ends with a story written by. Is it actually where's the? Okay, here it is. Yeah, uh, with the back half actually written by uh, Jerry Duggan, art by Matteo Lolly, colors by Rain Barado, and the letters done by VCs Clayton Cowles. And it's like a, the X-Men version of it, or the X-Men's. Those are all the, that's the X-Men team that's writing X-Men right now, so. <laughs> and it has, as usual, one of these um, X, X-Men kind of dialogue pages. And that says, uh, The island nation of Krakoa was founded under the idea of mutant sovereignty with the goal of giving mutants a place to flourish without fear of persecution. The fledgling nation made a splash on the world stage when it began exporting Krakoan medicine that was leaps and bounds beyond other medical treatments, leading to phenomenal recoveries and revolutionizing the healthcare market. But, unknown to the rest of the world, Krakoa harbored an even more miraculous secret, mutant resurrection. No mutant has to die ever again. Charles Xavier had a dream. Well, perhaps it was not his dream, but he was the necessary face of it. Krakoa was my idea. I wanted all bad eggs in one basket, but a cure for the X gene eluded me. In a hundred years, who knows where mutantdom will be? In a thousand years, mutants could rule the planet. We cannot let the mutants win. Krakoa must not be forever. Mutants were once hated and feared because they were different. Today, they are hated because they are winning. And we see a news broadcast, and the announcer says, 
Joining us today are Mary Jane Watson and her Aunt Anna Watson. The New York natives are brand ambassadors for Krakoa's Miracle Medicines. And Mary Jane says, thank you for having us. I had been resigned to the fact that I was in a long, slow goodbye to my aunt. Her dementia had started as senior moments and progressed to the point where I was scared to leave her alone. MJ's aunt says, I was so depressed, the idea that I might be a burden for MJ. I had trouble remembering, well, a lot. But those days are long gone. And MJ says, I don't always love when a scientific advancements are called miraculous. But that is what it feels like. We're privileged to have the pretty decent insurance but everyone pays the same price for these drugs regardless of insurance status. Every evening, Anna takes a single pill that extends the duration and quality of her life. And Anna says, I'll take every day I can get. I want to see how succession ends. And it goes back to who, I'll, I'll reveal who's doing the dialogue in a minute. Goes back to, to who's doing the dialogue. And uh, she says, what of these preening human lasses don't know is that while mutants have been able to make their worst years slightly less traumatic, mutants themselves will never feel that pain. Mutantum has a secret. They've solved for death. Mutants are no heroes. They're evolutionary deviants who stole fire from the gods. Mutant supremacy is not assured. Fears can be stoked in the hearts of man, and differences can be exploited. Into the necessary violence to come. When two aggressive species share the same environment, evolution demands acceptance or dominance. The Avengers and X-Men have fought before, but it was never done right. Because if it had there'd be none left standing. Of course, this is only what could happen. And it kind of shows like a, like a what could happen. I kind of like the part there in the center where Magneto is wrapping um, <laughs> Captain America's shield around his head. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, he got wrecked by Magneto. <laughs> and uh, he... The uh, she says uh, if I play my cards right, and then we get some more dialogue here by uh, MJ and her aunt, and they're talking, and uh, she kind of gets her aunt tucked into bed, and she's like, "I'm gonna go on a trip." She comes down, and the the person who's been doing the uh, the voiceover says, "I saw you on TV," and Mary Jane says, "Who's there?" Get out of this house. Get out of my aunt's house. And this unknown person grabs her and says, Ow, you'll disturb your aunt's sleep. And if you do, it's her life. Mary Jane yells, I said get out. And then she whimpers, Please. And uh, this unknown person says, I need your invitation to the Hellfire Gala. Ask me who I'll be wearing. And she says, who, who are you wearing? And the reveal's coming up in a second here. Let's check that out. Pretty scary, right? And M MJ2 in the X-Men universe? Pretty, pretty sweet. And uh, this uh, unknown protagonist says, My name's Moira. And when you wake up, I'll be wearing you. And it ends on this cliffhanger where Moira is terminated out, guys. Like, the last time we saw her, she was starting to do this. But now she's full-blown cyborg Moira, evil Terminator lady. And she's captured Mary Jane and... look. She has killed people before. She killed Banshee and wore him as a skin into the X-Men, uh, into Krakoa. Is she going to kill MJ and wear her as a skin into the Hellfire Gala? Oh my gosh.
Like I said, giant spoilers. Okay, all right. So that happened, and we're gonna have to to definitely wonder for a little while, I guess, until that comes out. What what is going on with that? <laughs> definitely give it a thumbs up. Um, I don't know. The blood vine thing in the in the center was kind of maybe not maybe not completely for me. I thought it was cool that they did that though. Uh, the beginning part by Gillen was uh, was so so, and I was kind of like still kind of wondering, but then Duggan totally wrapped it up and hooked me in with 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 this more more capturing Mary Jane thing. Like now I've got that that was a giant. Uh, I can't believe that was in a free comic book day. Like it's not like a giant key or anything, but just that that's that's a heavy that's a, a heavy uh thing right uh, i mean where's where's spider-man to save to save his girl all right anyways that's what i have today i, I give judgment day uh free comic book day a thumbs up i was a that was a really good read and i was completely like thrown by the ending of of the of the book like that did, i did not see that coming at all they they definitely, they definitely had me on that one. Um, yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe. If you do like this kind of content, you watch this far to the video. And that will also enter you to win the Joker number one Mark Brooks variant and the CBCA sticker. And if you do guys like this kind of content, hey, help me out. Click the link below, shop on my eBay store, and I'll send you some comic books. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow, and have a great night, okay?